Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the rest of the past night and for the gift of this new day. We face opportunities of pleasing you. Grant that we may so pass its hours in the perfect freedom of your service, that at evening we may again give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us now listen to the hymn, Lord, thy church on earth is seeking. Now hear a reading from St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 9, verses 35 to 38. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. We now sing the hymn, Let There Be Love Shared Among Us.
When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Words from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 9, verses 36. I speak to you in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Last Sunday, we celebrated the Feast of Pentecost, the birthday of the Christian church. And me, in my bubble, had a glorious morning. And in my sermon, I spoke to the groanings that Christians go through because all is not well in society. All is not well in our homes. All is not well in our world. Because whenever we turn on the radio or the, go to any media, there is some killing or shooting. And I was just generalizing. Not realizing that right here saw a Barbados. One of our police officers was gunned down. And what is so painful for me is that he was off duty. He could have said nothing to do with me. He was off duty. And he was in his own neighborhood going to help his neighbor who called, I presume, because they were being robbed. And so I groaned. I groaned because a young man who committed himself to protect and serve his country is now tragically a blessed memory. A wife is a widow and his children are fatherless. His colleagues are distraught and I cannot begin to imagine what the other family members and friends are experiencing. And so I pause. But we cannot and must not give up. And my help and hope continues to come from Scripture, the Word of God. So let us go back to the short text this morning. Jesus said to his disciples that the harvest is plentiful and the laborers are few. He said, we are told that he looked at the crowds and they were harassed like sheep before a shepherd. I want to set up the context of this closing verse of Matthew chapter 9, which I hope that later today all of us will gather our children in our homes, everybody in our homes, and sit and read this chapter. In this chapter, Jesus is in his hometown. And whilst he is there, there are people bringing the sick. Some people were bringing a paralytic and he healed the paralytic. The reaction, of course, by some people was surprising. It was not joy. It was criticism. Again, Matthew, the tax tax collector, he was invited to follow Jesus. Again, criticism. In fact, the text says, verse 11, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard this, he said, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. Food for thought. Jesus did not come to a perfect world. He came for those who are in need of him. In this same chapter, Jairus' daughter is healed, is raised from the dead, sorry. There's a woman with an issue of blood. She is healed. Two blind men receive their sight. A man possessed by demons, he's restored. With all of these healings and restorations, we would imagine that there is jubilation. Perhaps jubilation only among those who were restored. For we are told that Jesus looked out at the crowds and he had compassion on them because they looked harassed like sheep without a shepherd. Why do they look this way? 
so much is going on so much excitement is happening people are being made well so why do people still look harassed like sheep before the shepherd while trying to understand the continents of the people we also discover in this passage that jesus has compassion compassion is at the heart of jesus's mission and ministry for this sentiment appears in Matthew's gospel on a, a number of occasions. Jesus, for Jesus, compassion is not because the people were sick. It's not because he encountered people who were incapacitated or well. And those things, those conditions are certainly worthy of compassion. It makes sense to be moved with compassion when there are those who are sick. But what seems to have moved Jesus isn't the physical illness that he encountered, but that people looked harassed and helpless. They looked like sheep without a shepherd. What moved Jesus? And what doesn't move many of us today, as it should, is the great spiritual need of the people. We seem to have forgotten that the human being is body, mind, and spirit. And so we focus on food and clothing, not just clothing, brand name clothing. We focus on shelter. We focus on the social needs and we neglect the spiritual. And we only show up at church to hatch, match, and dispatch. Most of us. Many of our lives have no center. Our existence seems aimless. And our whole experience seems to be one of futility. Just going through the motions. That is why a number of us have no difficulty in taking another person's life without any concern. That is why we steal and rob from each other in broad daylight. That is why we are disrespectful towards each other. That is why there's so much road rage. We want to blow each other off the road. There's no courtesy. We have taken scripture and morning prayers out of most of our schools. And we refuse to acknowledge that the principles that we learned have served us well. And it is not that we lived in a perfect society. But the reality is we had greater respect for authority. And we were more neighborly and more loving and more concerned. And we trusted each other to the, to the point where we could have left our homes open and go wherever and return and everything in place. Today, Jesus' observation is still true. Many of us look harassed like sheep before a shepherd. And it doesn't have to continue this way because, as he said, the harvest is plentiful. By that, I imagine that he meant that there are those persons who seem to have no moral compass, those who seem to be wayward, they can change. And that change can happen if all of us put hands on deck. In some strange way, those who have lost their way, those who are in our prisons, they can find themselves again they can find themselves in society again if we are able to forgive. If we are patient enough to open our hearts to them and provide them with options. But we need more laborers. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. In other words... People are ready to receive the good news of the kingdom. The problem isn't that people are unready to receive the good news. The problem is that we aren't ready 
to tell them the good news. The workers are few. The criminal activity in our nation cannot stop itself. We are the ones who have to do it. Have you ever seen a pregnant government or a pregnant police force? Have you ever seen a school that was pregnant or even a church that was pregnant? My friends, all of these are organizations, institutions managed by people, managed by us. And more of us need to get up and smell the coffee. More of us need to get involved in the life of those persons around us in a positive way. We need to train our children to respect themselves and each other. We need to teach them the Ten Commandments. And if the Ten is too long, then we just need to teach them to love the Lord your God with all your heart. Love the creator of this universe. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. Whatever you want for yourself, that is what you should do for others. And this is not an easy undertaking. I know. In today's world, we have to retool. We have to do things differently. As soon as I hear the word laborer, immediately I think of someone in the hot sun with a shovel, turning cement and lifting blocks and carrying bags of cement in a pan cart. I even see people in the cane ground cutting canes. I know we don't do that anymore, but this is what I see when I hear laborer. I, I imagine people digging potatoes in the hot sun, sweating, not perspiring. And my friends, it is not easy. But if we want to live like Jesus, then we must also have the heart of Jesus. We must labor. His labor was one of compassion. He had a heart of compassion. He had a heart to serve. And he took time. He took time to understand those that he ministered to. He met them at their weakest point and extended his hand in love. That must be our response as well. If we want to turn our world around, we cannot be terrorized by a few, my friends in Christ, all of us. All of us need to be laborers, avail ourselves to train up our children in the way that they must go so that when they are old, they will not depart from it. In this season of Pentecost, let us pray for the spirit of courage to speak out against things that are wrong. Let us pray for the spirit of compassion that we may offer love and guidance to those who pass our way. And let us pray for the will to work the will to labor to transform the lives of those around us. Let us pray. And as we pray, God who gives us that desire will certainly provide us with the strength and the ability that is needed. To him be ascribed majesty, dominion and power now and forevermore. Amen. We now sing the hymn, Where He Leads Me, I Shall Go.
And just before I go, let me extend sympathies to the wife and the children of acting Station Sergeant Newton Lewis, who lost his life in the line of duty. Also to the members of the Royal Barbados Police Force as they mourn the loss of a colleague. Indeed, sympathies to our entire nation. Rest eternal grant to him, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon him. May he rest in peace. God of all comfort, we pray for all who are bereaved, that they may have spirit and courage to meet the days to come with steadfastness and patience, not sorrowing as those without hope, but in thankful remembrance of your great goodness and with the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, we pray for peace in our nation. And we pray that those who are the perpetrators of crime, that they may be brought to justice swiftly. Lord, help us to know that you are a God of peace. Amen. As well, let us now celebrate the highlights of our lives. And so persons celebrating birthdays during the course of this week, if you know any of these names that I shall call, please give them a call and wish them all God's blessings. So Marion Pierre, Wesley Garns, Annette Griffith and Alicia Sobers, Stella Waldron, Anita Yard and Pauline Taylor. If you know any of these individuals, please give them a call. And tomorrow, you can call Cheryl Ben, Redden, Dowden, and Renee Mears Carrington. They celebrate their birthdays tomorrow. All God's blessing for health and strength. Because once we have the health, everything else will follow. And we wish happy anniversary greetings to Charles and Patricia Price. May God indeed continue to help you to grow in love for each other and for him. Blessings, my friends in Christ. Have an awesome weekend.